What's going on guys? My name is Wade with Tech Daily, and in this video, we are checking out the brand new Samsung Galaxy A53 5G. Of course, this is the successor to last year's A52, and I suppose the A52S as well. And over the last couple of years now, it seems like this tier of A series, the A50s, the 51, 52, have been some of the most popular Samsung smartphones overall. And for good reason, I think. They're priced well, they pack a ton of great features, and specs, and if you have an A50 something device right now, you might be thinking about upgrading to this one. I'm going to go over everything you need to know about this A53 5G. I'll tell you what's new, what's changed, what's remained the same. But first things first, let's go ahead and unbox this thing so I can show you what does and does not come inside the package now. And shout out to this awful sticker that ruined my nice new box. It's kind of a bummer. So if you're even vaguely familiar with Samsung's smartphone packaging, you'll probably recognize almost immediately that this phone now ships in that slim minimal box. And that's our indication that there really isn't much included with this phone anymore. Slicing into the stickers and pulling off the lid, the first thing we get is the phone itself. I got mine in blue, obviously, which looks really nice. It's also available in black, white, and peach this year. And aside from that, the only other thing you'll find is a small packet of stuff that includes the SIM ejector tool there on the outside if you need it. And inside, just a couple instruction booklets and a USB-C to USB-C charger. And that's it. No charging brick, no earbuds, no headphone dongle, no case, nothing at all included. And this falls in line with what Samsung does with their flagship S series devices, basically just offering super minimal and accessory free packaging. So with all that stuff out of the way, here is the new A53 5G once again. And the first thing I wanna mention actually is pricing and availability. Now here in the US and around the world, this phone is available starting today and priced at $449. You can pick it up direct from Samsung Unlocked or through pretty much any major carrier, Verizon, T-Mobile, AT&T, US Cellular, and I'm sure later this year, many of the prepaid networks will offer it too. Right now, you also get a free pair of Galaxy Buds Live if you buy this phone from Samsung at least. Not sure how long that deal will last, but if you're interested in picking up a new A53 5G or doing some comparison shopping of your own, I'll leave some links down below in the video description to where you can get this phone at its cheapest current prices. So check down there for all the latest deals and discounts. Physically, this new A53 5G looks pretty similar to last year's A52, and even the A51 for that matter. We once again get a fairly large 6.5 inch display. That's the screen size, corner to corner, and up front you'll notice fairly minimal bezels all around just some slight black borders along the edges and a bit of a bottom chin, but an 85.4% screen to body ratio, which is just a slight improvement over last year. Around back, it's pretty easy to tell that this phone has a plastic rear cover. And to be honest, I don't know for sure if Samsung changed the material, but to me it feels softer, a bit cheaper, kind of spongy almost, hollow too. I don't know what it is, but the build has been better on previous A-series phones. The only design change really is just a slightly revamped camera module. There's a bit of a bump, but it's really not much. And actually, I think this is a nice little change, even though it's pretty subtle. The edges and frame of the phone seem to be a polished metal-like material. We get a very flat profile, that ice cream sandwich-like design, no curve in the display, it's very flat, and in the hand, it's pretty much the same size, shape, and weight as the last couple A50 devices. So if you like using your A52 or A51, this new A53 will feel very familiar. Taking a quick look around at everything else, nothing on the left side of the phone. On the right, you've got the same volume and power button setup as before. Down at the bottom, this phone keeps its dual SIM and SD card support, which is great. You have 128 or 256 gigs of built-in storage, but it's sometimes nice to add more. There's the USB-C port for charging, of course, downward firing speaker, but no headphone jack. Samsung finally removed it for the first time on an A-series phone. And I know some people will be disappointed with that. Up front, there's the center hole punch selfie camera just below the earpiece and secondary speaker. And around back, of course, the quad lens camera setup. Underneath the display, this phone once again has Samsung's in-display fingerprint reader. And to my knowledge, this isn't any different than last year. It isn't the flagship ultrasonic sensor. It's still plenty fast, but it does take a split second of tapping and holding to get into the phone. Either way, it seems fine, and I'm just glad it's still there. 
As far as the display itself, the 6.5 inch screen on the new A53 5G seems to be about the same spec and setup as last year. You get a full HD 2400 by 1080 resolution, packing in around 405 pixels per inch. And it's once again, a bold, bright, super AMOLED panel with a 120 hertz high refresh rate. Now, even though nothing seems to be upgraded or improved, I still think it's the display itself that's really a major selling point on this A series phone in particular. Between the bright, vibrant AMOLED panel that delivers just a ton of color to the smooth and responsive 120 hertz mode, you pretty much get everything you could want and then some, and I really have no complaints. Viewing angles are solid, it's plenty bright, it's very much a flagship caliper display, in my opinion, for half the price. And out of everything on these A-series phones, it really is the display that I consider to be one of the top reasons to think about buying this phone. And that once again holds true with this new A53 5G. When it comes to the out loud listening experience, Samsung continues to offer a solid dual speaker setup on this phone, one speaker at the bottom and a secondary speaker hidden in the earpiece. Again, I'm not aware of any major changes or upgrades. It could be a little louder than last year perhaps, but generally speaking, this is a very solid speaker setup for this phone. With most everything else remaining pretty much the same on this A53 5G, one thing that is different this year is the processor inside that's powering it. This new device actually gets a brand new chipset. Samsung's own Exynos 1280. It's a mid-range 5 nanometer octa-core CPU paired to the Mali G68 GPU, and it was officially announced this month with this phone. Here are the Geekbench scores for those of you who are curious, and I should note that this test was done after updating the A53 5G to the latest Android and One UI update that hit this phone that addressed the supposed throttling controversy that at least the S22 lineup was tainted by a few weeks ago, but it was also referenced in the update notes on this phone. Regardless, paired with six gigs of RAM, this is what we get on the new A53 5G. And just out of the box, I will say that this phone honestly feels maybe a little less smooth and fluid compared to other devices, or at least compared to what I expected. I'm not exactly sure what could account for that. It's just something I personally noticed. And it remains to be seen how this brand new processor will fare as I put it to the test in the coming weeks. But I will say that I know there is sort of a stigma when it comes to Exynos chipsets versus Snapdragon, for example. And I have seen other early A53 5G owners already referencing some overheating concerns and slight performance blips. So I'm definitely going to take note of those things as well. But let me know your thoughts on Samsung's decision here to go with their new Exynos chipset. One other thing that changed inside this device is the battery capacity. We now get a 5,000 milliamp battery in this A53 5G. Previous years had a 4,500 milliamp battery, and it's not a huge bump up, but still noteworthy, as you might get a bit more life out of this thing from day to day use. With most everything else remaining the same, including the display size and specs, and taking into consideration the new processor I mentioned earlier, which should, in theory, be better optimized at least, I am expecting a bit of improvement to the battery life here, but again, that remains to be seen as I put this phone to the test in the coming weeks. Aside from that, we don't get any new or additional charging features, 25 watt max wired charging speeds, though you'll have to provide your own appropriate power brick yourself, and no wireless charging or reverse wireless charging here. Last but not least, let's talk about the cameras. And with this, it's actually pretty simple. Around back, the A53 5G seems to have about the same camera setup as the A52. Four lenses that consist of the 64 megapixel main shooter, 12 megapixel 123 degree ultra wide, the 5 megapixel macro lens for up close photography, and the 5 megapixel depth sensor. The selfie camera also appears to be the same 32 megapixel f2.2 aperture shooter as before. And inside the camera app, you'll find a robust, albeit very familiar lineup of features and shooting modes that I think make this phone a great picture and video taker, but like almost everything else, there doesn't appear to be anything new. There's 
Pro Picture and Pro Video modes, Night Mode, Slow Mo and Super Slow Mo, 4K 30fps video capabilities, a high megapixel shooting mode, advanced video stabilization, plenty to be happy about for sure, but there just doesn't seem to be anything more here compared to the A52. Now to be honest, I'm not sure what else Samsung could have added, and I consider the camera setup to be another major selling point for this phone regardless, but I do wish there was something noteworthy here. In just snapping a few quick sample pics, I did find that this phone takes a really good looking shot. All the pictures, whether it be with the selfie lens or the rear lens setup, are very colorful. They deliver that well-known saturated Samsung color profile, plenty of detail too. Perhaps the end result with these pictures is a bit better, maybe due to improved process processing from the new Exynos chipset, but either way, this phone is going to produce a great looking shot for every occasion, especially for the price, but like I said, I'm not really aware of any major changes or upgrades with the setup as a whole. So what is new with the Samsung Galaxy A53 5G? Well, we get that new Exynos processor, a slightly bigger battery, no headphone jack, and a minimally altered rear housing design, but that appears to be it. And honestly, this seems to be one of the most minimal smartphone upgrades I think I've seen yet. If you have an A52 or A52S, I can't imagine it's worth jumping to this new A53. If you have any older A-series device, an A50 or A51, or maybe a lesser A-series device, something from the A20s or A30s, then of course this phone will be a big upgrade. But this time around, Samsung seems to have kept almost everything the same as last year. A bit of a bummer, I'd say, but I suppose there wasn't a whole lot to change anyway. But what do you guys think about this new A53 5G? Do you wish there was a bit more here with this new phone? Let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to know your thoughts, of course. Hopefully you guys did enjoy this video though. Be sure to follow Tech Daily on Twitter and subscribe to the Tech Daily YouTube channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys later.